What's up folks, it's me again with uh, yet another thing for you. Uh, today's thing is a thing which, um, and I'm basically going to try and say the word thing as many times as I possibly can because it's the 10 things, so I can say thing all the time uh, whenever a thing crops up that I need to say a thing about. Uh, so anyway, uh, I get myself distracted by these things. So uh, this next thing basically, I've done it again, just keep on saying it. The next thing is um, around uh, the Facebook Pixel. Now, I know what you're all thinking. There is no chance in hell that I'm ever going to be doing Facebook ads and... Uh, right now, it's the last thing on my mind. I'm no, by no means technical or anything like that. Um, but the thing is, at some point in the future, uh, you might be tempted. You may even be tempted after watching uh, the next uh, couple of videos because you'll actually see how um, easy it is to set up some of the basic stuff on Facebook ads. Now, now I'm not going to go through like a whole like um, gamut of Facebook advertising. However, there is one thing which is super, super important and the reason why I've included it in this series um, of videos is because the likelihood is you've got a website, maybe an Eventbrite page or a course up and running or something which you're, you're doing online and there will be people like traffic going to that thing. Uh, you'll have a Facebook page as well. So um, audiences are super important. Um, but basically, um, it might be that in a year's time you come around to doing some Facebook ads and then you have a quick look at like your assets and you haven't built an audience. Now you can't do ads without targeting an audience. You could choose some super cold audiences, but that's harder. Um, but if you have a warm audience, and that is what I'm gonna uh, show you in uh, this video, it's actually kind of broken into two parts. So part one will be um, installing the actual tracking pixels themselves. And the second part will be how you then go about setting up the audiences. But the idea being, irrespective of how you feel about ads right now, it's much, much better if you've actually collected that data and you've got the audiences there somewhere. Even if you have no intention of using them, at least you've got that data and it's there. Imagine if in a year's time you come around to doing this, imagine you've got no warm audiences. Well, you, you can't really do any um, advertising to those warm audiences. It's, it's kind of like chicken and egg. So I always, always, always encourage people to, at the very least, get the pixel set up so we can start tracking some data and set up some audiences so that, and you can just let them sit there then in the background. And if at any point you then decide, you know, actually, I'd really like to run some Facebook ads, you can because you will have set the pixels and you will have set the audiences up. Uh, so how cool is that? So um, I'll, I'm going to dive, cut across into the, um, the trainings now. Like I said, it's split into two parts. Um, see how you go and then ask me any questions which you've got. So one of the first things you're going to find when you have set up your um, business manager account, uh, you'll notice the website address up at the top here, business.facebook.com forward slash ads manager. And it always gives you the campaign screen to start off with. But before you actually get started with creating campaigns, first of all, you need to make some or put some tracking in place. So how we do that is we click on the little menu icon just underneath the home icon and go to events manager, which is where you will see um, the pixel tool. So how a pixel works uh, and this is, um, you know, you will have heard of Google Analytics. You will hopefully have Google Analytics tracking on your website. So a pixel is a bit like Google Analytics um, code. So it's a tracking code. And every time somebody visits your website, your event by your event bright page, or wherever it might be, and uh, there's a Facebook pixel code on there. So they somebody will visit your page. The pixel will fire. It'll send a little message to Facebook check whether that person's logged in and has a Facebook account. And then if you've got audiences set up, which I'll come on to next, it will then add that person into the audience that you specified. But it can't do that. It can't add them to an audience without first having the pixel set up, okay? So I've got a, um, a blank account here with no um, pixel tracking set up. So I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna show you how this works, basically. So. Notice you've got an option up at the top here under data sources, Facebook pixel track website activity. So you're just going to hit get started. And it will come up with a little pixel. So we're going to call this take your shot pixel. So obviously um, I've got a blank uh, account set up, ad account set up with the name of my book. 
And I'm actually going to um, track this under, because uh, I don't have a specific website for Take Your Shot. So we'll just do fearless.biz for now. It doesn't, it doesn't actually matter what, what the um, website address is, to be honest, but um, we'll do it anyway. And then it gives you a couple of different options here. So one is um, Google Tag Manager. Now, if you don't know what that is, you need to probably speak to your um, web designer, web developer, and see if they use Google Tag Manager on your account. So Tag Manager is a way of tracking multiple tracking pixels. Um, so if you wanted to combine a Facebook pixel and your Google Ads, um, uh, Google Analytics accounts, you might use Google Tag Manager or you might just have them as two separate bits of code on your website. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to drag this window over here, which is a, um, a website editing tool which I've got, which I'll, this will make sense in a second. But we're going to go, we're going to set, set this up manually to start off with. Now you've got a couple of options. So you'll see you've got a couple of bits of code here. So the key one you want is this under number two, copy the entire pixel code and paste it on your website browser, okay? And within that, you'll see there's a, an ID down here, 408463, blah, 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 okay? So those are two important bits of information. If, if you look at this and it worries you, and you have a web designer, you could just email these instructions directly to your web designer. So there's your pixel ID, there's your pixel base code. Um, you know, you could just cut and paste that. In fact, at the top here, you could just type in, so info at web designer. .co.uk. So you could just send that off to your, your web designer and they've got everything they need. They can install the Facebook pixel on your behalf. Um, in this instance, though, what we're going to do, because most of you will have sort of WordPress websites and things like that. So you could just copy this code to your clipboard and then under your, your website manager, you would then um, literally just paste it into a page on your website. So if I found, um, say for example, TYS promo down here and I wanted to track the traffic on this page, I could literally just paste it into here, hit save, and off we go. Okay. Now, you're also going to want to know whether this um, code has worked or not. So. What we're doing here is we're, we're probably, again, we're probably not going to be too worried about events, but you could set up an event if you wanted to, but I don't think we're too worried about events at the moment. So we'll just hit done. So what it's saying now is it's actually saying that that pixel is already active, which is surprising, but it's waiting for its first event. So you see it's a, it's a green circle, not a green dot. Ideally, what we want is for that to be a green dot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to fearless.biz forward slash TYS promo which I hope has my, let's just have a quick look, should have the, there we, uh, there we go, there's the pixel code which I just cut and paste onto the website. Uh, I've obviously looked at this page so it will have fired. So if I now refresh this screen, hopefully, it'll be a green dot, there we go. So it's no longer a green circle, it says it's active. Last received one minute ago, so that pixel is actually now active. And what we can start to do now is um, build audiences based on that pixel code. Another thing which you might want to do is there'll be um, various different websites and things like that which you're running. Uh, you may have an Eventbrite page or an acuity, sh or like acuity scheduling set up, like a, so a diary booking tool or something like that. You can add pixels to all of those different tools as well. So I was just very quickly going to show you um, how I've got it set up on my uh, Eventbrite listing. So if I go into any one of my events and then hit manage, here we go, and we've got an option here for analyze. And down here you'll see a little thing for tracking pixels. Now remember I was talking about the ID. So with Facebook, for example, is it gonna let us see? So we don't need to cut and paste that whole bit of code in there. All we need is the Facebook pixel ID, just that long sort of um, set of numbers and letters. And if you head back here, you can see that we've got the Facebook pixel ID just underneath the name of the pixel. So we could just take, take that pixel ID. Oh, it's actually, if you just click on it, it says copy to clipboard. We could just take that and we could paste it in here if we wanted to. There we go, done, okay? And then hit save, but obviously I don't wanna save that pixel and I'm actually going to just quickly remove it from this page here as well because we don't need it on this page either. 
Okay, so the next video, so now that we've got the pixel installed, we can actually start to build um, audiences around the pixel that we've set up. So that's gonna be the next thing that I'll show you how to do. The next step is then to start to build audiences. So there's lots of different types of audience that we can build. So I'm actually just gonna go through three of them. And it's these three audiences that you should set up. The moment you've installed your pixel, you should create these three audiences, okay? Uh, don't worry too much. I'll, I'll show you a saved audience in a second. I wouldn't worry too much about a lookalike audience, although I will set one up now. Um, but we'll kick things off with a custom audience, okay? And the first thing that we're going to um, uh, create, an, uh, create an audience for is website traffic. So all we're going to do is we're going to um, basically build an audience up of anybody so they meet any of these criteria or all of the criteria, doesn't matter, any of these following criteria where we've fired this particular pixel, all website visitors, and you can actually do um, website traffic up to the last 180 days, and we're just gonna call it website traffic. There we go, like that. And that is it. So now, once we've set the pixel up, whenever anybody visits our website, it's automatically gonna add them into that custom audience, okay? Now at the moment, that, that audience is gonna be really small. There's not really much point in driving traffic to it. But what I always recommend people do is set these audiences up immediately and start gathering data, irrespective of whether you think you're gonna drive traffic to it or not. It, it doesn't matter and use that audience. It really doesn't matter. But you imagine a scenario, if you, if you haven't built an audience up, it's a bit like turning up to a speaking gig and there's nobody there, okay? So even if you have no intention right now of doing it, in six months time, you might wanna switch on some adverts and start retargeting people who visited your, your website. Um, but you can't do that without having first built up the audiences. So make sure you always set up a website, a um, uh, an audience which is um, tracking people who visited your website, okay? The next um, custom audience we might want to set up is going to be um, a Facebook page audience, okay? So if we have a, um, uh, a Facebook page set up, so we can set up everyone who has engaged with your page in the last 365 days, give it a name. So Facebook page engagement. And again, it'll, if anybody has visited your page already, they'll get added to the audience in the last 365 days. Um, and then any future visitors to your Facebook page will also get added to this audience, okay? So we'll cre create that audience. So now we've got two audiences built. So we've got one audience of people who um, are looking at our Facebook page. We've got one audience of people who are looking at our website traffic. Another thing that we could do is create something called lookalike audiences, okay? And I again, I would suggest creating, so long as you've got these primary audiences built first, then like that, that's absolutely cool. Um, you can build these lookalike audiences at any point. I like to just set them up to start off with anyway. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna um, take, see, we'll do it. We'll do it with this one first. So um, actions create lookalike. So we're looking at the Facebook page engagement, and we'll probably do United Kingdom and closest one percent. Okay. So when you're setting up lookalike audiences. In the UK, there are um, 41.9 million people registered on Facebook. So what, what happens when we set up a lookalike audience of 1%, it's taking the closest 1% of the 41.9 million people who look like people who've engaged with our Facebook page, okay? So it's always gonna be this big. It's gonna be quite a big audience, all right? And, but it's the closest 1% of people in the UK who look like our current audience. So uh, we'll create that audience. There we go, look alike 1% Facebook page engagement. And just to demonstrate, we'll do the same for our website traffic. Create look alike website traffic, United Kingdom. Whoops, if I could type. 1%. Create audience. Now you can create one to two percent, two to three percent, three to four percent, etc., etc. For you, most of you, I would just start if you're going to use a lookalike audience just with the closest one percent. Now you'll also notice here that all of these are below 
a thousand. So really, Facebook's giving us a bit of a clue here. It's saying that actually, I don't really think your audience is relevant until you get up to a thousand people or more than a thousand people in it. Okay, you can still use these audiences, but it's probably going to be slightly more expensive to target these audiences sub a thousand than it will be once that audience gets over a thousand. And it's just because of the way their audience, um, their algorithms work. Okay, don't worry too much about it, but. Um, for now, it's absolutely fine. The other, the third audience which you could potentially create as well is something called um, a customer list. So if you have a um, uh, a Mailchimp list or a list of um, existing or previous or uh, you know customers, you can basically um, uh, import a CSV file. You can import an XLS um, spreadsheet. You can cut and paste if you want to. You can actually just cut and paste. Um, your audience into here um, and then give your audience a name and save it so then you've got an actual list of customers and it would obviously appear in here against your audiences so we've created some um, some audiences based on our pixel traffic we've created uh, custom audiences and we've created lookalike audiences once you've added your pixel and created the audiences now you can actually start to think about creating an ad campaign